Blue for the two. I don't know what to do. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Adam Pecora here, and you have tuned in to Requiem for a Tuesday. Thank you for listening. Uh, we've made it, ladies and gentlemen. The time is here. Week nine of the NFL season. She's in the books. So you know what that means. I had 100 milligrams of THC edibles, marijuana edibles, cannabis, cannabis candy. I was going to say cannabis, can, but it already has can in it. So it can't just be called candy. Canada, Canada. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they're working. Uh, if that's any indication for you folks. Uh, so we're doing the midseason recap. Every team in the NFL, other than, as of this moment, uh, the New York Jets and the Los Angeles Chargers have played at least eight games. Some have played nine. Um, unfortunately, I record on Monday, so the Monday night game didn't quite make it in there. But that's all right. Uh, If the Jets fucking win again, oh my God. They probably will. The Chargers are a fucking embarrassment. Anyway, we'll get into all that. First things first, please rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday if you haven't already. And if you have, hey, throw me a bone. Help me out. Let's do it again. Uh, Took a week off last week, so hope you had a chance to check out the Killers of the Flower Moon episode. If you haven't seen the film yet, go do it. But either way, if you haven't listened to the episode, check that one out. A lot of fun with Justice. Uh, Check out his show, Microwave Minutes, microwaveminutes.com. And uh, yeah, music, multiplex, Wolfax, lots of good stuff. Uh, But namely, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, Give me five stars, whatever else you can do. That would be great. Helps a lot to watch those numbers stack up. They're not, I wouldn't, you know, that sounds really elaborate and like, uh, what's the word I want to use? I don't know. It sounds like enviable or like cool. It's not, you know, (laughs) small multipliers, but still, thanks for doing it. Appreciate you. Um, we're on iHeartRadio now, so when the boomers get a hold of this fucking show, all bets are off. Uh, I'll be playing some like boat. I'll be doing like live podcasts at a boat casino or something, which I'm totally open to that. So if you're 49 to 63 or whatever the range is supposed to be, that's the thing. I don't know how to reach it because you don't know how to use your phone. So that's the problem. The podcast is on the phone. No, you listen to it with headphones. I don't wear those. Well, I'm sorry you get to make bold declarations like that when no one else in the world gets to. What the fuck? I don't do that, okay? Have an app on your phone? Everybody does that. You don't get to pick. Jesus. Why do they all think they're so special? I just don't get it. Because if they did anything to us, it was the teachers that were all worthless. <laughs> so the influx of that, just magic. Just magic. What a deeply flawed, selfish generation. Which, you know, look around right now. These kids are out of control. It's the same shit. It's all the same. Everybody's the same. It's terrible. (laughs) What happened? Remember fun? I'll never forget fun. Everybody else seems to seems to not remember that. People really like get off on being angry. You know what I mean? Whereas like I'm just angry. But I don't like it. You know, but everybody else would just rather be mad. 
and throw out really outlandish and wild statements to seem very important and knowledgeable. But that's not what that means. No, it is not. (laughs) Uh, How many times a day do I have to read the word genocide? Like, you're making it less of a thing. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's it's a bold... Never mind. We don't have to do that. (laughs) That's a different place. Show everything. We're not... All right. So before we get in, <laughs> is he ever going to start? Wouldn't that be great if I just never started the midseason recap? Um, Yeah, took the week off last week. Your boy just needed it. Uh, felt like it would have been a week early. I wanted to get everybody to at least eight games. You know, since technically I could have done next week even as the midseason, even though. But, you know, it's literally 18 weeks. This is week nine, so we're good. Uh, your boy's recharged, revamped, and ready to rumble. Uh, let's go with current news. I'm just going to open up this news, and let's see what's going on with the news. Uh, <laughs> car, uh, ooh, that was hard. I almost combined. I was going to say, because it says Cards QB Murray, but I was going to say Kyler, but then I was going to say Cards QB I don't know so I was gonna say like Carler or something right there whatever Kyler Murray to start for the Cardinals to which I say great please win two more games this year and we're good Uh, Bears draft is looking promising the Panthers will not win again, probably. Maybe week 18. I haven't looked at their schedule. Well, see, that's me jumping ahead. Anyway, Cardinals win. Please win. Uh, Josh Dobbs to start again. Listen, watching Josh Dobbs... First of all, people are impressed by this. He just did this. The Cardinals traded for him like four days before the season started. So he did like the exact same thing again in one season. Of course, the guy the Vikings started got hurt. Who was playing well anyway? Why are the Vikings still good? This is a nightmare also. I mean, somebody's got to win the fucking division. It's going to be Detroit, but I don't want I don't want them to win. That's horrible. Anyway, you watch this guy... Justin Fields needs three years to learn the offense? I'm sorry. This guy shows up and wins a game and doesn't turn the ball over. Doesn't take seven sacks. What the fuck? This is all bullshit. And I'm jumping ahead again to CJ Stroud. What the fuck is going on? That's the thing. If somebody's actually good, they'll just be good. And everybody else... Just either doesn't want to be mean or needs to, like, keep their job for some reason. So they need to lie. Like, this is insanity. I get, like, oh, Jalen Hurts took some time. I mean, either way, it wasn't as bad as what everything else is. The quarterback play has been horrific by the whole league all year. And, but... This guy, look, did he, like, light the earth on fire? No, but they still don't have Justin Jefferson. Like, sure, in theory, that would probably be pretty easy to be like, oh, I can just come into this game and throw the ball to 18, and he'll do the rest. That wasn't even the case. And they don't have a running game. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, what's next? Jamar Chase might be out. They'll be fine. Uh, Chase Young wasn't mad about trade to 49ers. Well, why would you? They're a much better team in a, you know, in in the same conference, but I was going to say. I was going to say a much easier division, but is that even really true? I mean, for the 49ers standing in it, I suppose, but. That's not really accurate. But you're not, you know, don't have the Eagles. That's for sure. Uh, 
yeah, why? Whatever. <laughs> I, I thought it was weird that they traded both guys. Like, the fact that the Bears get sweat. And I'm glad they got the extension over right away. I was hoping that would be the case. But in initial reports, you know, everybody panicked. He's like, uh, I don't even know where I'm sleeping tonight. I'm not going to sign a contract. Which is a reasonable, rational response from a person. But I'm thinking about the roster. <laughs> Which, uh, hey, think more about the team, Tez. Anyway, uh, he probably won't be worth that much money. But they needed to do fucking something. And he wouldn't have signed here on his own, probably. Everybody's up in arms, you know, about giving up a second round pick like when the Bears do it. But, like, it's not this guarantee, you know? Like, oh, so in your mind, we could have just drafted a defensive end in the second round, and that would be the same thing? Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I hate the idea of value, because it's like, yeah, you could name a lot of guys in the second round that are good. No shit. It's a highly coveted position, but, uh, I mean, 50% of guys at least completely flame out. So, you know, I can name a bunch of first rounders that aren't good. That doesn't, you know what I mean? It just like doesn't accomplish the same thing. Sure. There potentially could have maybe been someone else we maybe could have drafted instead. Now, like, a second rounder for Chase Claypool made no sense. All you heard was that he was on the outs in Pittsburgh. So, you know, the disaster that it turned into, obviously, I never foresaw. But, yeah, that was an overpay. I mean, I... I don't know. I I still I want to know more about what happened there. I want to know real answers. Like, did we get outbid, or did you just call them and give them a second round? Did you get fake outbid? Like, because I just don't see how even at the time you don't get him for a fourth. Considering we can get Montez Sweat, like Montez Sweat and Chase Claypool, last year, were not at the same level. Like when the trade would have happened for Claypool. You would not have been able to get Montez Sweat for a second rounder, given the, I guess the contract's a reason enough. But you know what I mean? There was just never a reason why he was worth that. And, uh, yeah, it's not going well in Miami, I believe, already either. So, good fucking riddance to that loser. Like, I really don't. At, at this point, it's like beyond being on polls, like the GM, but... It was a bad move even if he wasn't a complete asshole. Like, you know what I mean? If he stayed on the team and, like, you know, followed his assignments, it's not like he'd be lighting shit up anyway. The team is horrible. So, and then we got better without him, as as mentioned. But, you know what I mean? Even if he contributed and there wasn't a bunch of drama or anything like that, right now he'd have, like, 250 yards and like two touchdowns maybe so it's like that's you know anyway bullshit with the second rounder it was a good trade it was a good trade but it's like unless you're gonna sign another one in free agency next year or with one of the two first round picks take another edge then it was worthless and then i agree with that but I mean, you just you just would not have gotten a better guy in the second round. So if you just look at it as like we drafted him in the second round, I mean, maybe that's me oversimplifying it, but that's just how I, I mean, that's literally what the direct trade is. And the draft pick would have signed for what we signed his extension to. So fine with it, as I said. Uh... Daniel Jones out for the year, torn ACL. Look, the Giants are terrible. Uh, the Giants and the Bears are basically like the same team, except the Giants kind of deserve to have expectations because they made the playoffs last year and won a playoff game. Whereas the Bears hype came from nowhere and they're 
technically better now than last year at this point. They only have to win one more, and they if they lose to Carolina, the coach should be fired uh, right after. Not that that will happen, but that that's what should happen. But I think that they'll do business, no problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a disaster! I I don't really have anything else to say. Who I mean. Even if last year was a fluke year to drop off this much, uh, kind of shocking. So I, I, I don't really. I'm kind of just confounded by the Giants entirely. Um, their, you know, their offensive line is like a mess. Despite I'm pretty sure Andrew Thomas is like great, but I guess that's it. I know Evan Neal has been like a disaster, which is odd. This is what I mean, though. Like, first-round guy doesn't mean shit. It's supposed to be a lock, and he's n- terrible. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. So, sorry for them. Cam Akers tore his other Achilles. Rough, man. You're not built for this. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. And then uh, Taylor Heineke remains the Falcons' starting quarterback. Look. They, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, it's looking like, because they can't win fucking two games in a row. Is that literally their output? Win? No, they won the first two weeks of the year. Then two losses. Win, loss, win, loss. Loss. Two losses in a row now. Okay, great. <laughs> Way to go, Atlanta. Okay. Look, they're better with him. Uh, Drake London was also out, so it's like if Drake London plays, they win that game. But tough to lose to the guy who has been on the team for three days. I mean, the defense was supposed to be the Falcon strength, too. So that, I Again, I'm just thoroughly confused by the Vikings as well. This... <sighs> The season's just so complicated. I really can't pinpoint anything still at this point. It's kind of immaculate. Is it that's not the right word? I don't think. Okay, so let's get into it. Finally, 25 hours into the episode. <sighs> Had to take a deep breath there. AFC East. The Miami Dolphins are 6 and 3 after losing to the Chiefs in Germany. The fumble for a touchdown was bullshit. Uh plays like that never stand. He definitely didn't have forward progress. It was behind the line of scrimmage. He had the ball for 2 seconds. Uh not 2 seconds. That would be a long time actually in NFL terms. But you know what I mean. Um Brilliant play to lateral it back, though. I I honestly think the lateral is an underutilized play, especially in defensive returns. It'll shake up the entire thing. Like, you just have to know, again, yeah, that was in a position where it was a very clear and easy thing to do. It is risky. I understand that. So, whatever. But, uh, listen, Yes, the Dolphins can't beat good teams. I agree with that, and that will probably stay true. They'll probably make the playoffs, though. Um, The thing is, the Chiefs have the best defense in the league, possibly. Like, that might be a real thing. Mahomes said that, I think. Somebody did. That Honestly, it might be real. Like, you just don't want to picture it because the offense is supposed to be the thing because of Mahomes. But, I mean, the Patriots had the best defense or, like, a top eight defense in the NFL all the years they won the Super Bowl, basically. Um, And that's, you know what I mean? Like, that goes, that carries over all the time. The Rams, you know, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, like, Hall of Famers on the team. Ramsey probably won't be in the Hall of Fame. We'll see. We'll see. Long way to go, Jalen. Um, But you get what I mean. The defense is usually just as good as the offense when a team is truly there. 
like a great Super Bowl winning caliber year in, year out. You have to have both playing at top 10 levels for the most part. I'm sure that there are plenty of obvious examples when that's not the case, but maybe not that many. I genuinely don't know. Um, And their offense is like, it's just Mahomes being that great. Their skill guys suck. Like, Kelsey still got it. Obviously, he's doing fine. Didn't show up in Germany. I don't know if the jet lag, he just couldn't handle it. And he needs to stay stateside. Um, But, like, that Rasheed Rice kid will probably be pretty good next year. And is very good for a rookie, but is not like the reliable target they need. Um, and they just don't have one, like outside of Travis Kelsey, who is essentially unguardable. So, you know, a fine issue to have. Uh, but like I saw Donovan Peoples-Jones got traded to Detroit, which is a great fit for him there, frankly. So that's exciting either way. But the fact that a guy like that goes for a sixth round pick, the Chiefs couldn't have done couldn't have done that. I think he's an he's a pretty damn good receiver. Now, you know, am I used to just seeing the highlights and I don't know how his game is like for 60 minutes? Absolutely. But to not try to make some kind of move, I, they've gone like anti-splashy on purpose. But I don't know. Just seems odd. They should have tried to add one guy. I feel like that's the mistake in how they're not. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't seem like they're looking to run it back. Well, I mean, obviously, that's the goal, and they're like, pro- they'll probably make it back. I just feel like, or maybe they'll lose in the title game or something, kind of like Tampa. Tampa tried to just run it back. And it just doesn't work. It's very hard to just repeat. Now, they're going to be in it every year. And they're going to have a... I mean, it's going to be like the Patriots again. They would have to monumentally make massive personnel mistakes to do that. Which is... Which would be if they don't... I guess if they don't make it or don't win the Super Bowl this year and they don't go out and add, like, a key piece. I mean, they had Juju, and then they let him go. Like, they got worse. You could have at least retained that guy. Like, he did well for you. Not a superstar by any means, but that's, like, a guy. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah, it's working, but... The playoffs, I mean, somebody's going to be scheming Kelsey out of that game. And you're going to be able to bank on these guys in an AFC title game or even a Super Bowl. It it almost seems they're just like, look at how good our coaching is. And again, the defense is amazing. Uh, I love McDuffie. He's unbelievable. It seems like he's always in on a play. Um, and Chris Jones, obviously, just unstoppable. So that was somehow a thing about Miami. <laughs> but my point was just, yes, they can't beat good teams. But in this case, that defense is legit. So Miami's got Raiders next week. Look, that should be fine. The Jets after that, I mean, come on. Commanders, Titans, like they have a pretty easy way to go other than like the Ravens who will probably shut them down, but they might wrap up the division before that. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm not high on them as real contenders uh, for the chip, but I think they'll win the division at this point, the way that Buffalo looks. Um, look, if the Jets win tonight, also, this is, well, I'm just going to go in order of the standings here. The Jets are technically in second place. If the Jets fucking win again tonight, 
Like, I swear to God, they're going to make the playoffs, and Aaron Rodgers is going to come back, and they are going to win the Super Bowl, and I'm going to have to jump into the river because I I can't handle it. They need to lose three to four, like, in a row, and we need to put this shit to bed because it's going to loom over every week, and I can't have it. I can't. I cannot have it. So that's all I have to say. I have a hissy fit that I'm going to fucking throw all over the place if he wins a fucking Super Bowl for the Jets after tearing his Achilles in the first game. There's no way that that gets to be a storybook ending for him. I will not accept it in this reality. Oh, shit. Just dropped something. Sorry if you heard that. Um, Go, Justin Herbert. Please don't fuck something up for once. For once. You're supposed to be this generational superstar. Win a fucking game. Uh, Buffalo, sne- look, not looking great. Broncos next week could be a get-right game or a sign of where their season's really going. Uh, then it's Jets, Eagles, Chiefs, Cowboys after that. So if Buffalo's for real, they got to they gotta win three out of the next four pretty much. That's how I'd look at it. Might be tough, honestly, the way they're playing. But, I mean, Josh Allen is just so good. Stephon Diggs is just so good. But it kind of seems like they're just like, well, we play like the Bills instead of trying to be more of themselves. That doesn't make any sense. It seems like they're trying to play like the Buffalo Bills instead of trying to adapt anything really adjust the scheme to personnel or whatever the fuck you might need to do adjust the play calling run the ball more change something up uh but it seems they're just like well no but like we're the bills so we're supposed to go empty sets shotgun and josh allen's supposed to throw it 49 times and run it 18 times every game what what else could we do? Like, you know what I mean? They're like a parody of themselves at this point. Um, So I don't know the reason for that. And the defense still there. Seems like it's lost a lot of the tenacity. I don't know. I haven't, I feel like I haven't gotten to see them a whole lot in a full game. Until yesterday. I mean, I watched like the Jags game, which that was a disaster. So I don't know. They're weird. They're just weird. You know, it's like they beat Washington 37 to 3. They built they beat the Dolphins 48 to 20. But then, you know, they the Giants game is 14 to 9. They lose to the Patriots. It's just Oh, that's weird. Uh, they won 24 to 18 to the Bucks and then lost by that score last night. So I don't know. Uh, I think they need to shape up. Like I said, three out of the next four, they might be fucking out of it. So I'm kind of worried about that. I'm avoiding trying to do really any more like predictional things because how many more times am I going to change up these picks? You know? <laughs> so, and I don't even remember what I said anyway. <laughs> uh, the Patriots, I mean, dumpster fire. So Belichick probably should leave, to be honest. If I were him, I heard the rumors of the Chargers. That would be smart. The thing is, if he really doesn't have it anymore, then that won't matter. And then they'll still suck. And then that'll be crazy. So it's almost better if he stays on the pats and just grinds out wins over a long amount of time. Um, Because then at least it's like, we can still claim the aura of him being a great coach. But I don't know, man. They can't execute fucking anything. So Mac Jones completely fell off. They fucked up royally by doing the Matt Patricia thing last year. One of the dumbest and oddest choices you could ever make. Um, So, yeah, that's horrible. Baltimore, I hate them, but they're amazing. Uh, I still don't 
get the whole thing how we're like, well, they, they're they good at receiver now when all they did was get a rookie and then sign OBJ, and OBJ is not good. Uh, he does not look good. Every time I see them throw him the ball, he drops it or just can't reel it in, not necessarily just a straight-up drop, but it's like a contested ball and he doesn't come down with it. Or, yeah. And then he's complaining constantly. Like, not at his teammates or anything, but to the refs about every little thing. And it's just like, maybe you've just lost it. And look, he had that great redemption run on the Rams, and I think that that was that. Um, Here, let's look at his stats real quick. What are they? I mean, he's fourth. He has 19 catches, 218 yards. Nelson Aguilar has more, has one less catch, but more yards and another touchdown. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's the rookie and Mark Andrews, who Mark Andrews was always the guy. So, yeah, they got one guy. But the idea that they, like, massively upgraded their receiving core is insane. Uh, they fixed the scheme, it seems like, which they did. Actually, we knew that because Greg Roman left. And they just installed like a real passing attack, which is what I've been saying on this show since I've been doing it, talking about football. Um, they they just didn't have an offense for passing. It just there's no way to evaluate Lamar, but he's other than he sucks in this offense because this offense sucks at passing. It just never looked right. Um, and now they have a real one, and he's completing seventy two percent of his passes, and you know, only has three interceptions. So, hello. <laughs> the The reason why it didn't seem like he could be an NFL quarterback passing was because the offense was set up just for the option stuff, and that was it. So, yes, he is answering the question. He certainly can be a pure passer, um, and he's still nasty as shit on the ground. So they're really good. Their defense is fucking great. And, yeah, I wish the Bears had Roquan Smith. Tremaine Edmonds sucks so far, and Roquan has never not been great. Uh, He also was never really a difference maker, but was great. And it's just great to watch a great player be great, you know? Like Aaron Donald on the Rams, he's the only good player on the defensive line anymore, but it's great to watch him. They're not going to just get rid of him fucking idiots they still pay him even though the team sucks but like now we'll do it with montez sweat and that's fine that's what's annoying about it it's like i won't pay roquan just because whatever uh pittsburgh and cleveland more so pittsburgh winning in spite of their offense Pittsburgh's offense is the most unwatchable in the NFL. Let me see. I'm looking over the teams <laughs> just to double check. No, Carolina's worse. Uh, Arizona with Clayton Toon is worse, but they were also playing Cleveland. So what can you say about that? Um, but unwatchable. Kenny Pickett is terrible. That offensive line is terrible. But guess what? How good could the Texans' offensive line be? That's the other thing I wanted to say to compare to Justin Fields and whatever. And also, the Bears' offensive line isn't bad anymore. It really isn't. Braxton Jones is not bad officially. Like, he's solid. Uh, Tevin Jenkins is fucking legit. Cody Whitehair has always been legit at blocking. Uh, And Darnell Wright is legit. And now that they have a solid guy at center in Lucas Patrick, like, the offensive line is mid at, at worst. So it's not an excuse. They're not. And same thing, but like how bad could Pittsburgh's be? That there is it just Kenny Pickett holding the ball? Cause watching Justin Fields, it's like it's like do 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 throw. Oh, now he took a sack. That's how much time passes in between when the ball should be thrown in any offense ever. Um It feels like that's all that happens to Kenny Pickett. And it's like they have great receivers. They've always had great receivers. Pickens is unbelievable. Deontay Johnson is amazing. 
I think Fryermuth might be hurt, but he's a g- really solid tight end. So either way, when he's healthy, they have good running backs. Like, I'm sorry, it's that dude. They need somebody else. So th- I I think they'll probably be looking after this year. Because, I mean, that just ain't it. They should be so much better. They need a new coordinator as well. Their offense itself is not very good, but Kenny Pickett is not good. Cleveland, look, you don't want to root for Deshaun Watson, but I love every other piece on the team other than him so much that I want them to be good. And also, the Browns never have been good since, well, the they would have been good a lot because they should be the Baltimore Ravens. So technically they've been very good ever since uh, they moved and were good when they moved, obviously. Or were they? That wouldn't make sense, but they must have been solid. Anyway, whatever. Um. So, the you know, outside of like the one Derek Anderson year, which was electric, Braylon Edwards, never forget. Miles Garrett's just fucking amazing, man. And their secondary is intense. They come at the ball. I respect the fuck out of the Cleveland Browns. Um, So I am rooting for them, I would say. I mean, just casually. You know how it is. You just find your little narratives you like to root for. Now, Cincinnati, I love Cincinnati. Joe Burrow is my favorite player in the NFL. I think at this point, that seems right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's right. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I just love watching them, and obviously he has back from his injury, whatever that was, that clearly derailed them to start the season, and now they're just beating very good teams constantly and easily. Um so their record doesn't look as good because they struggled early because of injury, but they're fucking elite. Their defense is better than ever, I think, because they're just shutting teams down now. So if they keep that up, then fuck yeah. And they keep they upgraded the offensive line again, which it kind of didn't work last year. I mean, th- this is the team that should win the Super Bowl, realistically. I mean, they're playing the best right now. I would say, on both sides of the ball. But, I mean, technically, they're out of the fucking playoffs. (laughs) So, I don't really know how that's going to shake out. Um, Jacksonville, I hate them, but they're going to win the division. So, what can you say? Uh, Houston, very fun. Very, very fun. Good for C.J. Stroud, but also that's annoying. Um, but I don't really have any other thoughts, but he's obviously incredible. Uh, Indianapolis, weirdly competitive, but they're just kind of a nothing team. Um, so it's like if Anthony Richardson ends up being great, good for them. I like what they were trying to do with him. So hopefully he can stay not hurt. Uh, Tennessee, who would have thought Will Levis is good. He was at one point going to be like the first pick in the draft fell way back and ends up being the one guy that's very good other than CJ Stroud. So funny how that all works out (laughs) where it's like, yeah, the initial thoughts were always the right ones. Not always, but in this case, anyway, uh, they're not really winning though. So whatever. I don't imagine them turning it around and like shaking things up or anything like that. Uh, Kansas City running away with this division again. Their defense is so good, and Mahomes is so good. Nothing really else to say there. Uh, the Raiders, Josh McDaniels, the worst guy of all time. Everybody hates that guy. It's a miracle that he. I mean, maybe that's the Belichick thing. He's like, I just hire pieces of shit, so I can be grumpy and seem like a great guy. You know, it's like the morale thing. Like, Belichick's the nicest fucking guy in the world compared to this prick. I don't know. I don't get it. He also doesn't seem to be a very good coach. So I don't know what his accomplishments are technically. Uh, But good for them for getting the win, I guess. They're done, though. They're nothing 
yeah, they're a waste, unfortunately. The Chargers, look, if they beat the Jets, there's a chance, but I don't believe in them. I think Staley's a bad coach, and I think Herbert can't win, and maybe those are correlated. Um, but I thought my boy Kellen Moore would change things for them, and that is not the case. So that sucks. And Denver, yeah, they're also just a waste. Like, you know, there's just nothing really to say. They're bad. They, that's what's the weird. Like, they were the worst defense in history for a second. And then all of a sudden they're, like, holding people to 13 points a game. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Nobody, I, I don't know what to make of a, any of these teams either way. Like, like Houston, they could lose six games in a row after this, and it wouldn't be surprising. They could make the playoffs at this point, and it wouldn't be surprising. That doesn't make any sense. Halfway through the season, I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. At three quarters of the way through the season, I will have an idea. It's an unbelievable game. Nobody understands it. Why don't you love it? Well, if you're listening this far, you do get it. So thank you. But to all those losers out there that aren't into football, it's just like, how, how can you not? It's a never-ending puzzle that you can't put together. Uh, where was I at? Jesus Christ. Yeah, Denver is nothing. Uh, Philly, I mean, they're amazing. They're going to go right back to the Super Bowl, it seems like. They just beat the shit out of everybody. And they're good at winning. That matters more than anything. And they've been limiting turnovers. Jalen Hurts was throwing a ton of interceptions. They're limiting turnovers. They had a horrible loss to the fucking Jets of all teams. Again, the fucking Jets, like a miracle Jets win. And that's it. And, you know, the Cowboys were kind of in it. But they couldn't score. They kept fucking up. Philly's just better. They're just better. I don't like them. I've never really liked the Eagles. I mean, I like Jalen. I like this offense because I love A.J. Brown. And I do like Jalen Hurts. Um, They burned me in the Super Bowl last year. The Bengals burned me the year before. So, I mean, whatever. But, yeah, this is, like, as likable of an Eagles team in my entire lifetime for me. So, the only time I've ever rooted for them, I think, was last year in the Super Bowl. Um, I I don't see how they wouldn't get back. I mean, if San Francisco turns it around, like, that's, that's the clear, like, those two against each other. But didn't go so well for San Francisco last time. But look at the rest of the NFC. Like, realistically, I don't think Detroit would beat them, like, in Philly NFC title game. I just can't imagine it. Maybe next year. Maybe. Uh, Dallas, I don't believe in at all. They might make the playoffs. Who cares? Like, Dak's not the guy. The problem is he's, he's too talented that you can't really move on justifiably. So I get it. It's a very weird predicament. to be. It's the Kirk Cousins situation. You're not going to upgrade from this unless you end up with a top six guy or eight, wherever you want to rank those dudes. But, yeah, you'd basically have to, you'd have to trade Kirk Cousins or Dak Prescott more accurately because he's younger. But, like, you wouldn't be able to trade him for Tua. They wouldn't give that up. You'd have to, like, add first-round picks. Kind of like the Jared Goff trade. Um, so, yeah, I just... Yeah, Washington's a disaster. Uh, I don't get why they keep saying that, like, they believe in Sam Howell. He's bad. He's really, really bad. Talk about holding on to the ball forever. He's going to get sacked, like, 80 times this season. Uh... He runs around like he's Johnny Manziel. Like, he's a fucking idiot. That guy's not good. Uh, they lost to the Bears. And, that, like, what did I say? 37-3, to three, whatever, to the Bills? They're terrible. Fuck them. And, yeah. Giants, we already went over. Just tragic. Just tragic. Uh, Detroit. Still kicking it. I believe this was their bye week. Oh, they got the Chargers next week. Yeah, the Chargers are fucked. Their season's done. 
Fuck them. <laughs> what a bunch of losers. Like, they don't deserve Justin Herbert. They probably will lose to the Jets. Coach might get fired before the season's over if they lose three in a row right now, four in a row. I could see them losing the next four games in a row. Jets, Lions, Packers, which, you know, fringe. The Packers are a mess, too. And then Ravens, which they won't win. That's for sure. Um. So, yeah, I Detroit, I think they're going to cruise to the division, even though Minnesota's somehow 5-4, and four, as I mentioned, which is also insane um, because they suck. I, I don't get it. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Like, what's going to happen there? Josh Dobbs is going to lead him to the Super Bowl? Don't imagine so, you know? So either way, when you make the playoffs, that's good. That's nice. Justin Jefferson's not pissed. That's all you want, really, if you're them. Green Bay, Jordan Love, not very good. Um, Maybe their offense isn't very good, but, I mean, none of those receivers, you know, Aaron Rodgers didn't play well with them. So the fact that we're like, well, Aaron, excuse me, the fact that we're like, well, Jordan Love looked really good for, like, two weeks, and then he, like, really fell off. It's like, well, maybe it was just, you know, early season shit. That's what always happens. And maybe now you have Jordan Love trying to do what Aaron Rodgers did last year, and maybe Aaron Rodgers is better than Jordan Love, which everybody already knew. So I think ultimately it's not that surprising. I think what's surprising is that the running game isn't really working. That's kind of a bigger issue to me. Um, But as far as, like... The passing game, I mean, they have no proven weapons, and that was the whole thing already. So that's just still true. And part of that could be on Jordan Love, but I think that's just, you know, you just have too young of skill guys. They need to get, like, a a solid vet in there, you know? But. Maybe not. And like I said, Detroit, adding Peoples-Jones I think could be good if Jamison Williams ever gets any type of consistency going. They've got solid receivers then, you know, and their the rookie tight end is great and their defense is awesome. So we can say the NFC South, every team is bad. The Saints are not good despite them winning. Like their defense is good, but their offense is horrible. It's clunky and... Like, Michael Thomas is supposed to be amazing. He hasn't been good in years. Chris Olave seems to be legitimately pretty good. But, and then, like, Alvin Kamara is, like, not the factor he used to be, and I think that's because, like, Sean Payton's not the coach anymore. So they've just kind of lost all the creativity that they need. And But for some reason, they still run all these Taysom Hill packages. So I don't know. That's just, like, the Saints' identity is Taysom Hill. But... Again, like if they make the playoffs, nobody's afraid of them. Derek Carr is not winning a Super Bowl. He would have to be like on the Ravens, I guess, or something like or like Pittsburgh. That's the thing. If Derek Carr were on Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh would be a real contender. That's the perfect place for him. Um, so unfortunate that uh, they had to try to believe in Kenny Pickett because that would have been a huge move, actually. Uh, Atlanta, we kind of went over it. Uh, the defense didn't show up once they switched over to a different quarterback when that wasn't working. So I don't know. I don't know if Arthur Smith is a good coach. I liked him in Tennessee, all the stuff he did there. I Again, I love the players on Atlanta's roster, which also pains me to say because of Ryan Pace being the GM there. So I... I, I don't know. Again, shocker. Another confusing fucking team. May, they could end up winning the division. Tampa could end up coming back and winning the division. New Orleans could run away with it. Doesn't make Nothing makes any sense. Now, Tampa, their D all of a sudden fell apart. I thought that they still had all a lot of like really good players on there. So... <laughs> Uh, I guess C.J. Stroud just is that good or they have guys out or what, but that was rough. 
And Baker's looking like pretty decent for them. So it's just kind of a shame that they keep losing because then it just makes it seem like he's not that good. Uh, so I don't know. I kind of hope that they get a couple wins, string something together, have like a nine-win season or something. But I, I prefer Atlanta to win this division, however that could work out. So, But I don't, I don't know. These teams either all suck or are all half okay. I mean, Carolina is definitely terrible. They're the worst team in the league. Um, and let's keep it that way. Bears Thursday night. If the Bears blow this game, horrific. You have to beat this team. You just have to. DJ Moore needs to go off on them, as a matter of fact, to be like, y'all gave me up, and this is what you do. You know what I mean? Like, if the Panthers score a bunch of points on us and Bryce Young looks great, that also makes them look good. So we need to, like, this is our Super Bowl, basically. This has to be a, like, we need to trounce them and also give ourselves the number one pick from them. Like, everything about it is, like, a must-win game. And the Bears season is over, so it's like, th this is the best it'll get. And plus, the, after that, the Bears are going to lose games. They're going to lose games. It's Lions, Vikings, Lions, Browns. They're going to lose all of those probably because they're so bad. Um, and then they'll maybe beat the Cardinals, but I would prefer that they don't. And if Kyler Murray is still going to be playing, he'll light us up. They have no answer for Kyler Murray. So that could be huge. They could easily lose to the Falcons and Packers. Like we're we're looking at like this could be the Bears' last win of the year, also potential here, um, which would be great. Also, I would love it if the Bears went three and fourteen and the Panthers go one and sixteen. Let's do it. Um, that's the best outcome for this season for me. So. Um, and then the West don't know what to make of Seattle now that they've kind of gotten their ass kicked two weeks in a row. I mean, they beat the Browns. They shouldn't have beat the Browns, but the Browns kicked their ass. Um, and the Ravens really kicked their ass. Well, I mean, obviously they scored on the Browns, you know what I mean? But I guess Geno Smith specifically got his ass kicked. Uh, but yeah, that was rough. But then San Francisco has not been playing well. Now maybe this buys what they needed to bring everything together and they're going to come out and they're going to smack Jacksonville next week, which honestly I would like. I don't really like the 49ers either, but fuck Jacksonville more. You expect more out of San Francisco just because. So. I don't know. I think the Seahawks will keep winning because that's what they do. They also know how to win. Pete Carroll knows how to win. He's a, he's a great, historically good coach at this point. I think he should be considered because, yeah, if you measure everything in Super Bowls, then sure, it's not the greatest resume. But just 10-win seasons, how many in a row? Like, it's unbelievable. And playoff appearances, all this. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I still feel like they shouldn't be that good. But they are. So, I don't know. The Rams, obviously, it looks like that's just going to fall apart. So, but they're, they're, like, fun to watch. They're a watchable team. Their defense is bad, and they just have a lot of no-name guys from trading away all of their good draft capital over the years to win that Super Bowl. But, uh, you know... If I was McVay and Donald, they probably should have retired like they talked about considering after winning the Super Bowl. Because now it's just like, you know, just like, hey, they're still there. Remember when things were good? You know? Because now it's just like you're just going to have like multiple years with bad records on you and stuff. That's not ideal. Whatever. Whatever. The rings last a lifetime. In Arizona, like I said, you just got to win. Please just win. Win as many games as possible. Um, and they've got winnable games on their schedule. So, eh, not a ton, but some. 
what a season. I, I don't know what's going to happen. The football's kind of been terrible. The quarterbacks are kind of shitty. Um. Yeah. Wow. All these teams, like the NFC West, who's going to win the division? Probably San Francisco, but like right now, they seem like they could lose three games in a row. That wouldn't be surprising. Same with Seattle. Same with L.A. You go in the NFC South. All of these games, all of these teams could lose five games in a row. <laughs> like, and it wouldn't be shocking. Uh, the North. Everybody but Detroit. They could lose three, four, five games in a row. Wouldn't be shocking. Like the only teams in the NFL that I am truly confident in are Philly, KC, unfortunately. Baltimore and Cincinnati. And that's it. I mean, so the NFC, I, they should clean up the NFC, to be honest. Again, unless San Francisco would be the only real threat. Now, obviously, in one game, anybody can show up and win. So I'm not going to act like it's a lock lock. I just mean in terms of like, Probably a significant favorite. Like, wouldn't the Eagles be a five and a half point favorite over every team but San Francisco if it were like the championship game? I think so. Maybe not Dallas just because of division, but that'd be bullshit. You know, Detroit's just not in a spot where you can trust them yet, especially since. That Ravens loss was so bad. It was a couple weeks ago now, you know, but big losses like that against good teams are not ideal. And, you know, so I don't know. You know, like, who's the MVP? Probably just Patrick Mahomes, because who else? If it's not like Miles Garrett, which, you know, nobody will ever do. They're always soft. It's got to be the quarterback. Why not just do best quarterback award? I think Bill Burr has said this multiple times. But just do a quarterback award then. And I guess that's what offensive player of the year is supposed to be, like the next best whatever. But you make it intentionally less prestigious to be, you know, Offensive player of the year versus MVP. And technically, like, defenders are eligible for MVP, but they're really not. So I don't know. It's a minuscule thing, ultimately, I would say. You should, re- I guess you could really just go off of the all pro teams, and that should really be your, like, your true gauge. But. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, right now, at the midway point of the season, it is Philly, KC, with Cincy looming as the favorites by far. So, I guess ultimately not really that big of a surprise to anyone. Funny how that works out. All right, I'm super high. This has been incredibly difficult. I hope it it made sense and was somewhat entertaining, at least. Uh, I will be doing this again in four weeks. Right? The three-quarter season. So, I don't know. Yeah, week, week 14. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out when that makes sense later when it when it's possible for me to figure that out. And, uh, uh, yeah, so we'll do that again soon. I'll be back next week, s- sober-ish, uh, and we'll probably talk about The Killer, which I got to see in theaters, but we'll probably watch again on Netflix. comes out this Friday. Very excited. Again, please rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday wherever you're listening. Please share it if you can. It means a lot. Um, Check out all the links in the description below if you want to see some of the other things that have been cooking in the lab. Um, And I think that's it. But remember, 
I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculate a baby. I just want to add up. One plus one equals me and you. That's the two. You, my boo. Okay. <laughs> Calculator. <laughs>